everybody, JC here with another TNI toy review, and today's review is in association with MarvelousNews.com, your number one news source for everything Marvel. And today we're going to take a look at the new Marvel Infinite Series three and a quarter inch Death Heads figure from Hasbro. Now this is uh, this figure comes in Hasbro's second wave of its new Infinite Series, which is a rebranding of the Marvel Universe line. Um, and as I said, the figures are three and a quarter inch tall. Um, the figure comes packaged in the same kind of packaging we saw in Series 1, very generic. You've got the Marvel Infinite Series logo up at the top. Then you've got some um, Avengers icons underneath that. You've got Thor's hammer, cap shield, uh, or the star, um, Iron Man's helmet, and Hulk's fist. And then underneath that, you have the figure clearly displayed in the packaging. Um, very generic packaging, basically the same thing with all the figures. Um, and then on the back, we have an image of the actual figure that's released, a brief bio up in the corner about the character, and then down below we see uh, the other figures in the second uh, wave of this Infinite series line. Okay, so let's get this figure open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so here's a look at the figure outside of the packaging. Now, right off I'll tell you, I'm only somewhat familiar with the Death Heads character. I know he's primarily based, um, he's a UK character, um, he's a, basically a robotic bounty hunter. Um, I remember reading the, the Death Heads 2 miniseries back in the 90s, and I actually kind of liked the look of Death Heads 2 over, over this version, but it's still a pretty cool version. Um, and then most recently I um, caught him in the uh, Iron Man comics, in the Tony Stark origins, uh, he made an appearance there. So, you know, he's one of those characters that kind of pop up briefly. He's also, he's also got some connection with Transformers um, in the UK. Um, he appeared in the Transformer comics, I think, uh, written by Simon Furman. I've never actually read any of those issues, but, but he does have some connection with Transformers as well as just regular Marvel comics. Um, but the figure itself is, is very cool looking. A lot of nice details. Um... I really like the head sculpt on this one. Um, I think they've captured the overall look of Death Heads. Uh, he's got like the his jaw that protrudes outwards. That's just a soft, rubbery material, so it's very flexible. Um, but for the most part, looks really good. And he's got the red horns on his on the top of his head, and very silver metallic paint. Uh, he's got this cape uh, with the big shoulder pads, and that's removable. Uh, you just have to pop his head off and you can take the cape cape off. Um, now, under the cape he's got these holes on both the front and the back and there's no, you know, it's not used with this cape. So this leads me to believe that this, uh, at least the upper body of this figure has been used before. Um, usually when you see strange holes, um, that's an indication that that it's from a previously used mold. I don't recognize it right off the top of my head. Um, so if you recognize what what figure you originally used, it, you know this um, upper torso with the holes on both the front and the back. You know, be sure to comment, let us know. Um, but I have a feeling that that is why it has these holes, even though it's not used on this actual figure. And of course, the holes when the cape is on are completely covered, so you can't see them. Um, he's also got um, this other piece um, around his waist. It's not really removable, but it is a separate piece from the figure. Uh, so it doesn't, it prohibits the movement of the legs somewhat, and we'll go over that with the articulation in just a moment. Um, and then he's got on his, on his fists, he's got spikes on both of his fists, which are nice. And then he's got spikes on the bottom of his uh, boots which look good. And I just like the blue metallic paints uh, that mix with the silver and then the yellows and reds on his costume. So I think the overall look again of the figure is really cool. Okay, so for accessories this figure comes with a number of them. Um, he comes with a shield. Um, it's gold or yellowish kind of gold uh, with some sculpting on it and it just attaches to his wrists. Um, you can put it on either his left or his right wrist. Um, then he comes with his uh, battle axe, which you see him use often in the comic books. Um, it has a very short handle, um, and it's just a silver metallic, painted with silver metallic. You kind of see like uh, 
sharpening marks on his blade. So some nice detail there. And then he also comes with his uh, battle mace, which you also see him use a lot in the comic books. It's got some spikes, not too sharp or anything. Um, and both the axe and the um, and the mace are kind of like a softer plastic, uh, so they do bend a little bit. But and again, this is just painted with silver metallic paint. Now another feature that the figure has with its accessories, you know, as I mentioned, the cape is removable, so you can kind of count that as another accessory. But another thing, uh, feature that it has is you'll notice on the back here, he's got these kind of two little indents on his cape. Um, and it's kind of you kind of miss it at first, um, but then he's also got these on the back of the shield. He's got these little extra clips. So if you want to have them, so like he's not holding his weapons, but ca he can carry them on his back. So you basically you just clip them on uh, the shield, the handles on the shield, um, and then you can stick the shield and these little indents on his back. Um, and so then it looks like he's carrying uh, the weapons on his back, which you see him do in the comics often. So that's a cool feature. Um, also, if you want to, you can kind of like uh, put like the battle, if you just want him like carrying the battle axe, um, you can also uh, kind of slide it under his cape. Um, so it also looks like he's carrying just the axe on his back. Um, if you wanted to have like say the mace and the shield in his hand. Okay, so scale-wise, this figure stands just around five inches tall if you account uh, from the bottom of his feet to the tippy top of his horns on his head. Um, he's just about five inches tall. Um, now scale-wise, it's hard to say how accurate it is. Um, seems like this is a type of character that you know shows up various times at different sizes. Like in the Transformer comics, he seems as big as the Transformers, which obviously he's not that big. Um, in the most recent Iron Man stories that I saw him in, you know, he was he was definitely towered over Iron Man. And in this case, you know, here he is next to the Marvel Universe Iron Man. You can see he's definitely taller than Iron Man. So that seems to be pretty close in scale of what I saw in the most recent comics with with Death Heads. Um, and he seems to incorporate, you know, he seems to be about the same height as as the other larger Marvel Universe uh, figures that have been released. So I don't think there's really a taller uh, Marvel Universe figure out there um, height wise um, for this line so basically he's about as big as he's gonna get now you might you could say he could use to be a little bit bulkier but again I, I think he looks pretty good overall articulation on this figure is pretty good for the most part um, he's got good head movement uh, he can turn his head both left and right, and he has good up and down movement. You know, he can look pretty high up, which is nice. He's got a hinge on his neck, uh, which is good. Um, and then his arms are attached with the standard ball hinge joints at the shoulder. And he's got these big pads that are attached to his cape, so it doesn't limit the movement too much. And, of course, you can remove the cape if you want. Uh, but for the most part, he's got pretty good rotation even with the cape on. He does have a bicep swivel. Um, he's got the single hinged elbows, so he's got pretty good bending at the elbow. Um, he's got swivels at the wrist, but does not appear he has hinges at the wrist, so he's just got the swivel. Um, then he's got uh, the midsection joint where he's got some swivel there uh, and a little bit of up and down crunch there. So again, halfway decent movement. Um, and then he's got the you know the legs are standard uh, ball joints but because of this waist piece he can't really do the splits very much um, or get his you know he can get his legs forward about that much um, but he can't really get get the legs back and again the legs are just attached with ball joints which I just popped off here uh, so let me pop that on he's got a, a thigh swivel um, then he's got the double jointed knees so he's got good bending at the knees, and then he's got um, he's got a hinge at the ankle and a swivel at the ankle. Doesn't really have ankle pivot, but he does have the up and down movement uh, with the ankle, and then the swivel, um, and then he's got two peg holes at the bottom of his feet. Um, now, one thing I also want to point out is this figure does suffer somewhat from what I call soft uh, plastic. Uh, 
you know, if you've been collecting Marvel Universe figures, you've probably come across this before. But the plastic, you know, the joints, it's a very kind of soft type plastic. It's, you know, I don't think you really have to worry about it breaking, but definitely, you know, you can kind of feel some give in the joints and stuff because it's a very soft kind of plastic that Hasbro seems to be using with these figures more and more. Okay, so that's my review. Overall, I really like this figure. I really like the detail. Um, I like the accessories. I think they've done a good job of capturing the look and feel of the Death Heads character, uh, at least the, this particular version of the Death Heads. Like I said, I, I kind of like the Death Heads 2 version uh, from the comics. It'd be cool if we saw a figure of that sometime down the road, but this is definitely a cool version, and I think they've done a good job with it. Um, get it in some good poses. Um, and again, I really like the the sculpting on the on the head with this one. So this figure is hitting um, well. It's hitting online e-tailers right now. I haven't heard any reports of people finding Wave Two at physical stores yet, but definitely the second wave of Marvel Infinite is hitting uh, e-tailers. So you can order these online, and they should probably be hitting uh, physical stores uh, soon if they haven't already. So that's my review, and and we will be. Um, we will be reviewing the rest of the figures in Wave 2 in the coming days, so be sure to check back for that. So that's my review. I hope you enjoy it. Until next time, I'll check you later.